I was very excited about making Three Days to Kill because I'm a very American filmmaker and the opportunity to work with Luc Besson in Europe, in France in particular, was very exciting to me because I knew it, it would expand my horizons. Then I started talking to Kevin Costner and we talked about the character of Ethan that he plays and we talked about the story and it seemed like a wonderful opportunity to have an action film with a great emotional center that is about a man coming to terms with what matters most in his life. I'm a huge fan of Luke's. Luke wrote the script with a guy who I knew from America named Adi Hasak, and I responded to the mix of styles that the script represents. So I like that challenge in the interest of bringing it all together in one cohesive film. So to me, the film jumped off the page and I jumped at the opportunity. He's someone that spent too much time at work and has therefore lost touch with what matters most in life. And I think that's a theme that many people can relate to in the real world. Many of us spend too much time uh, on things that matter less than that which matters the most to us. And that's what this film is ultimately all about. And Kevin and I got to talking in Santa Barbara, California and we connected over the character and the take on the character. And selfishly, I wanted to be the beneficiary of working with an Academy Award winning director. So we had a great many conversations about what we were doing and it was very enjoyable. And Kevin's a tremendous talent and we feel lucky to have him. The female characters are interesting because you have Amber Heard who plays essentially the femme fatale role and she's very challenged in this film because Kevin is such a strong screen presence. So I got to Amber early and I said, you need to be very strong or you're gonna be overwhelmed by Kevin in each and every shot. So we really took that challenge seriously and she stood up to him physically, emotionally, in regard to the dialogue delivery in every way. She's very credible as someone who's lived this international life and is very skilled in the ways of humankind and has a deep understanding of what makes people do what they do. And she prepared very intensely, and we all know she's a pretty girl, but I didn't want her to depend on her being pretty to get her out of tough situations. I wanted her to be intelligent and powerful and reminiscent of some of my favorite screen sirens of all time, Rita Hayworth, Lana Turner, etc. We have Connie Nielsen, who grounds the film by playing the ex-wife Christine of the Ethan character. And she's very compelling because she's a bit of an expatriate who's now living in Paris. And Connie is very international in her path. Perhaps the most exciting component of the whole film is Haley Steinfeld. She's Academy Award nominated actress from True Grit. And she's an extraordinary screen presence who we are lucky to have at this place in her career. And she's just got that natural talent of being lit from within, where everything she does, she makes it sparkle and she's very, very credible. And she understands what it means to be young and alive, but at the same time, she has an emotional complexity which is beyond her years. She's Academy Award nominated actress from True Grit, and she's an extraordinary screen presence who we are lucky to have at this place in her career. And she's just got that natural talent of being lit from within, where everything she does, she makes it sparkle and she's very, very credible. And she understands what it means to be young and alive, but at the same time, she has an emotional complexity which is beyond her years. Parenthood and being a child and being a parent and relationships in general are very complex and very interesting things to study. And I know that I've always subscribed to the idea of your parents representing the way you want to be and the way you don't want to be. Both are equally informative to a child. And I think that's represented in the film and what you see Haley's character, Zoe, coming to realize she resents her father for not being around for so long. But then she comes to realize that he was out servicing a greater good and she comes to learn a little bit of forgiveness. And she can now make those decisions. In this way, I wanna be like my dad. And in this way, I don't wanna be like my dad. And I think that's successful parenting. I'm a big fan of gallows humor and just sort of dark humor where 
no matter what the circumstance, you find the need for emotional release, and that emotional release is oftentimes represented in humor. So the film is surprisingly funny on occasion, and I think that adds again to the strongest suit of the film, which is its dimension. It's not just one thing. It's a very complete film, and those are the films that I always responded to most favorably growing up. And I'm a child of the cinema, so I like to laugh, I like to cry, I like action, I like relationships, and I like films that represent a great many human emotions. For me, it was great to shoot in Paris because I'm very specifically American. If you look at my earlier films, you know, Charlie's Angels, We Are Marshall, Terminator, they're very American films. And my style is very Americana. And I knew that it was time for me to expand my horizons. And there's a decidedly French crew on this film. Luc Besson has written the script and everybody's speaking in French day in, day out on the set and it affects you. And the approach to filmmaking, the camera package, the crew, every single thing that goes into the tactile experience of making a film is very, very different in France than it is in the United States. And I, I embrace that. And occasionally I would be puzzled by choices or things that were going on, but I always tried to lean into it and embrace it to the best of my ability. The way you capture the film is critical. But then there's also the manner in which you photograph the film, which is very specific in that I'm influenced by Mike Nichols and The Graduate, for example, where I don't like noisy photography for the sake of noisy photography. So very rarely is the film handheld. But when it's handheld, it's meant to be specific so we're feeling what the character feels or the disoriented feeling of the Ethan character who has side effects from his medication of losing consciousness. And we even built a special rig with a post coming out of the sternum of Kevin Costner. So as he moved, the camera would move in perfect synchronicity with him, which created a very dizzying feeling. And it's little things like that that I like to contribute to every time I set out on a filmmaking adventure. So there can be something to write home about and some signature style of the photography. So hopefully we've achieved that.